In this video, I'm going to briefly show you what I mean when I tell you to update the firmware on your 3D printer when installing Clipper. This series is sponsored by PCBWay. This video is part of a series which shows you how to update your 3D printer to use Clipper firmware. And so I'm going to assume that you've either seen the previous videos in the series or you at least know what Clipper is and why we're doing what we're doing. If not, then go and watch the other videos in the series, which you'll find linked in the description below. You need to update the firmware on your 3D printer when installing Clipper so that your 3D printer's control board can relay the information between your newly set up Clipper device and your 3D printer's motors, heaters and sensors. Updating the firmware is a little different on every different 3D printer or more specifically every different control board and I won't be able to cover everything here. But what I will do is show you how to find the information you need for your 3D printer, plus a couple of different methods for updating firmware on different 3D printers so that you at least know what's involved before you start. I'm going to demonstrate on three different 3D printers, which all have slightly different methods and quirks for updating the firmware. The machines that I'm going to demonstrate on are a Kingroom KP3S Pro, a Creality Ender 3 version 2, and an Artillery Sidewinder X2. Now, the very first thing I would advise doing is actually finding Marlin firmware for your 3D printer. The reason I say this is that you're going to want to return your printer to a usable state should you have any problems at all with the Clipper setup. When you update your printer's firmware using the clipper.bin file, it will no longer be usable without being attached to your Clipper device. So it's good to have a backup option should you have any problems. I would also advise finding the exact same firmware that you currently have on your 3D printer if you can, but you can use something different if you want to. Just make sure that it's the right firmware for your printer and control board. So in order to find the right backup Marlin firmware for your 3D printer, you need to know what control board you have. My Ender 3 version 2 has a 4.2.2 board and an STM32F103RET6 chip which I know from reading what's written on it. My Artillery Sidewinder X2 has Artillery's Ruby board, and my KP3S Pro has what I believe is an MKS Robin Nano board. An internet search leads me to firmware options for all three of these machines, which I'm downloading and saving for if I need them later. Now, as you might expect, PCBWay, our series sponsor, are a great option when you want PCBs making but you don't have to be some big electronics manufacturer to use their services. PCBs can be useful for all sorts of projects and PCBWay's rapid prototyping option can get your PCBs made in as little as 24 hours for when your project is time critical. Next time you need a quick PCB prototype making, give them a try. Now, back to that printer firmware. What I'm also going to do while I'm finding Marlin firmware is to find out how to flash firmware to each of these machines. This is often detailed by manufacturers on their websites, so it's a good place to start. The Ender 3 appears to be the simplest and the Sidewinder X2 appears to be the most complicated, but I'll work through each one and show you how it's done. If you're more of a visual learner like me, then another very viable option is to find other YouTube video guides from other content creators. I will link to anything I think you might find useful in the description below. Now, as I said at the beginning, this video is part of a series, and in part four, we created the clipper.bin file that we're going to put on our SD card or USB stick to then upload to our 3D printer. If you don't have that clipper.bin file ready, then go back and find out how we compiled it using our Clipper device. Once you have your file, it's time to follow those guides for flashing firmware to your 3D printer. For my Ender 3 version 2, it's simply a case of copying the .bin file to a formatted SD card, inserting it into the printer and turning it on. The firmware is flashed and we're ready to move on to the next video. This is also the point where you may as well remove your 3D printer's screen. We're not going to use it anymore and it will just be in the way. The King Rune process is very similar to the Ender 3's, but the only difference is that the .bin file must be renamed to Robin underscore Nano. Once this is done, it works exactly like the Creality machine. The Sidewinder, however, is a different story. Its Ruby mainboard doesn't have something called a bootloader, which many other boards do. This means that we're going to have to jump through a few hoops. If you want to add Clipper Control to your Sidewinder X2, then I'll link to a great video guide that I found. But in basic terms, because of the lack of a bootloader, you have to use a separate program 
or physically connect a couple of pins on the control board to put the machine into DFU mode. Then you need to use another separate program to upload the firmware to the machine through a USB cable. It's not that difficult when you find a good guide, but it is a very different process to some of these other machines. Now that we have all three of these 3D printers updated with Clipper firmware, it's time to move on to the next video in the series. Click up here to see that video now. Or alternatively, if you have any problems with your Clipper setup and want to return to Marlin firmware as we discussed earlier, then click down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.